good day everyone in this video we will see the use of a combustible gas indicator that is what we call as explosive meter also and when this explosive meter should be used and how it is to be used and what is the functioning of this equipment now it is a very important equipment especially when you are uh, on tankers where you have to see any flammable gases present inside a space now one thing it has to be very clear is that this equipment is to be used in a non inert condition okay why because in this equipment there is a small explosion a minute explosion takes place or a mixture of a gas burns you can call it a small minute explosion or a mixture of gas burns inside this equipment and with that burning only it identifies or detects the presence of a gas now if it is an inert condition there will not be any oxygen present for burning for fire we need oxygen so it cannot be used in a inert condition that we have to be very careful so this instrument is used for low concentration of hydrocarbons as a percentage of lower explosive limits now explosive meter is the registered name for a combustible gas indicator which is manufactured by msa company normally we call it a explosive meter only but it is actually a combustible gas indicator cgi now this works on the principle that a lean mixture of petroleum gas burns on the surface of a hot platinum fil filament which forms carbon dioxide gas and hydrogen vapor the oxygen in the air is necessary for combustion to take place and we will get misleading results if we try to measure the concentration of this petroleum gases in an inert condition by means of an explosive meter okay we will also get misleading results if we try to measure a rich or explosive gas mixture so it has to be basically used when the gas mixture is very low now if we see inside the principle of functioning of this equipment is based on a wheatstone's bridge in the wheatstone's bridge there are four resistances r1 r2 r3 and r4 when all the resistances are same r1 by r2 is equal to r3 by r4 then no current flows into this equipment but what happens is if you look here there is an aspirator bulb when you press this aspirator bulb when you switch on this equipment and when you use this aspirator bulb a sample of the gas mixture from the space is withdrawn into it okay it comes into this resistance and then it burns on this filament when it burns this resistance changes okay and this wheatstone bridge is no more balanced when this resistance changed the wheatstone bridge is no more balanced and due to this burning the resistance changes and that is then deflected as a current on the galvanometer here which shows us the reading of the gas inside okay this is the basic principle of uh, working of this explosive meter so the in this equipment the current is supplied from a battery when these resistances are balanced no current flows through the meter one of the resistance is a hot filament as a such as a platinum wire coil okay so this one and this is a combustion chamber here because a combustion actually takes place here an aspirator bulb here and a flexible tube are used this is the flexible tube which is used to draw a sample of air or the sample of gas inside this combustible chamber this gas will then burn in the presence of a red hot filament which is called as this process is known as catalytic oxidation and it causes the temperature of the filament to rise the rise of the temperature increases the resistance of the filament and this change of resistance unbalances the bridge the current flow registers on the meter which is scaled in percentage of lower flammability limit 
for parts per million. We have to make sure that before we use this equipment, the in instrument and the batteries must be tested before. And we should try to take the samples from as many locations of that place, of that space as possible. Okay, because there may be some concentration of gas in some other spots. It is possible to obtain a reading for any hydrocarbon, but not for other combustible gases on an instrument which is scaled for hydrocarbons. Detection of other vapors may be by devices intended for that purpose. Now, this explosimeter is primarily a combustible gas detector, but will also give guidance with regard to the safety of a space for entry by personnel. Okay, whether it is safe for the people to enter inside that space or not. If the space has been ventilated to remove vapors, the remaining concentration can be measured by the explosimeter, provided that it is below the lower flammable range. Generally, any needle deflection above zero is taken as indicating a toxic condition. So this we have to keep in mind that it is used to measure gases only in low concentrations when the space is not inert, when there is sufficient oxygen. Now, again, it is important to emphasize the fact that the instrument cannot be used in inert atmosphere as to measure an explosive or too rich gas mixture. This explosimeter has to be calibrated regularly and this calibration is carried out by means of a known ga gas mixture. So this known gas mixture is provided in a bottle to us on board the ships. This calibration gas, what we use, is normally 50% LEL lower explosion limit butane in air. Butane is suitable for control of explosimeters, which are used for measurement of crude oil, as the vapors of this oil contains mainly butane and propane. Explosimeters, which are to be used for measurement of low concentration methane gas, need to be calibrated for such gas before use because the lower explosive limit of methane gas is higher, that is about 5% by volume in air, which is different from that of butane, which is only 1.6% by volume in air. So simply to understand how this functions is, let's see it again. It's a Wheatstone bridge, four resistances, R1 by R2 and R3 by R4. When all four are same, the bridge is balanced. There is no flow of current. But when a sample of gas is withdrawn into this combustible chamber, combustion chamber, there's a red hot filament. This gas burns here and the burning of gas rises the temperature of this filament, which then, which then unbalances this Wheatstone bridge and the current is flown through the galvanometer, which is deflected as a needle on the galvanometer, which shows the lower explosive, uh, which uh, shows the concentration of the gas inside this space. Again, we have to remember not to be used an inert condition because we need oxygen for combustion to take place. If there is no oxygen, combustion will not take place and it will not show correct reading. Normally, another equipment called as tank scope is used when carrying out gas freeing of a space. So that can measure gases at higher concentrations also. Once the amount of gases has gone below the lower explosive limit, then at the end, you have to use this explosimeter to see the concentration of the gases inside this space. Okay, this is about this explosimeter. Very simple to understand and uh, to use. Okay. Thank you for watching this video and for understanding how this explosimeter works. If you find it useful, Please share it with your friends and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you. And if you have any doubts, then you can write uh, the doubts in the comment box. I'll try my best to reply to those doubts. Thank you. And uh, please don't forget to subscribe.